my song, you'll live again. And the phrases that I rhyme are just the footsteps out of time. From the time when I knew you, Reuben James. Well, one of my favourite tracks there. I just got my iMac up and working again, and uh, today I just would like to talk about uh, quite a serious subject about which gospel you're actually preaching. Now, the correct gospel will come with correct doctrine, and it will be in line with what Jesus says, and it will be in line with what the apostle says, because what the apostle said was in line with what Jesus said. Okay, so for those of us who have went ahead and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The next thing you need to realize is that you need the water baptism, okay? This is something that Jesus did, okay? He led by example in all the doctrine uh, that Jesus did and spoke and taught. The apostles did the same thing. As you know that uh, all the apostles took the baptism of John, okay? In which Christ actually um, humbled himself to partake of that baptism as well. But whenever he did, he received the baptism, the greater anointing from the Father, and the baptism of fire okay so when we're walking with Christ and when the apostles were walking with Christ they had a level of anointing where they could uh, heal some ailments according to the faith they were given okay uh, and they could um, rebuke de some demons not all of them okay some of them were very very um, more powerful and that uh, people some of them were possessed with many many different demons so uh, some of the apostles couldn't actually rebuke them until uh, Christ actually went to heaven and then asked the Father to send that same anointing that Christ got at his baptism which is the greatest anointing ever known uh, in the creation of man since since Adam of course and uh, you know we don't know the, the powers that Adam and Eve had but we know that the, their, their physical structure would have been blessed in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit and that uh, they, they, they couldn't die now uh, recently I was watching about a nanotechnology and it's something that you can actually quote um, certain items with okay so if I if I quoted uh, let's say uh, my shoes with this certain nanotechnology then it means that the dirt would just um, drop off it that no, no dirt could stick to it okay um, some some other nanotechnology you can um, it extends the actual electrical field or impulses around whatever it is. Okay, so it's almost like an invisible shield that it forms around it. Okay, so so you get that in some shock absorbing um, glasses. Uh, they have they have this nanotechnology where you, you you see people taking sledgehammers to a piece of glass and it's just bouncing off. Okay, but otherwise, of course, it would go straight through. So this is kind of like the power that we have in the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that we have that 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 our bodies are um, indestructible. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying here is that the anointing that we get, okay, um, it strengthens our mind. It strengthens our bodies, okay, and uh, basically um, that's one of the the dimensions of the Holy Spirit is the might of the Holy Spirit, of course. And uh, if we consider that Yeshua had all seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit, okay, you're getting people like um, Samson, who obviously had the might of the Holy Spirit. You've got to consider that Yeshua also had that dimension of the Holy Spirit, whereby if he wanted, he could have went and ripped to shreds maybe several battalions of Roman guards with his bare hands. He had that strength, Yeshua. But it shows you the level of control and the level of obedience he had to the Father because he knew that time hadn't come yet and uh, that he had to become obedient to the Father unto death and was nailed to a cross. Now, that is what we all must must go through, okay? I'm not saying, okay, because all the apostles, even the apostle John was tortured and put in boiling pots of oil. What I'm saying is that when we accept Jesus Christ, the gospel that's been preached today, there's many TV evangelists promising you cars and money and uh, just about everything so that you can accept Jesus Christ and leave and tell you that unless you get raptured then then you're going to suffer a very very horrific painful death okay which 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 that kind of theology is um, is antichrist I believe what we really should be preaching is people like Paul Washer is telling people yes accept Jesus Christ 
but go out to the most remote parts of the world and preach the gospel and certainly don't expect to come back alive okay um, that's what real men of God preach if you give your life to Jesus Christ then you've basically signed your own death warrant and uh, but you've actually um, saved your soul in eternity so as long as you keep following Jesus Christ who's called Yeshua in the Hebrew tongue then our souls will be saved in eternity but we must keep following him okay uh, there, there's one uh, dear brother I think it was John and his wife uh, some guy, I really like his style of preaching, but uh, he fell out with me because um, he can't accept that a person, even if they are saved through a confession of Jesus Christ, and even perhaps baptised, that that person could still fall away. Okay, that This is something that the apostles continually warned about, even the apostle Paul says that Satan is, is always trying to get us to do things in the flesh, Okay, which contradict the word of God okay that's all that really Satan can do once we're sealed with the Holy Spirit we have the nature of the Holy Spirit and the only way that Satan works is through um, basically the covetousness of the flesh and that's of course the, the tenth commandment is thou shalt not covet that's how he begins to corrupt a character and coveting so he will begin to be tempt you with uh, jobs with money maybe with a certain woman okay and all of it you must ask God is she the right woman, is this the right person is this the right job, ok and this is how we should walk with, with Christ and I'm, I'm reminded very much the past few days um, just about the the fact that uh, you know that, that when God moves um, don't expect it to be an easy ride but we must, we must be very obedient and we must be very very uh, determined to see the word of God through when we receive a word from God sometimes it's a promise for our life See, these promises are just not going to fall into our laps. We must follow Christ. We must be obedient to His will. We must be continually washing our garments with the blood and the testimony of Jesus Christ, okay, in order to overcome the evil one, okay. And uh, I was even tempted after my baptism. There's a few brothers at the church that um, actually Satan came to me and uh, tempted me after my baptism. And I, I liken it very much to um, the time that Satan tempted Christ. And took him up to the pinnacle of the uh, the temple and told him to throw himself off and that the angels would catch him okay um, but Christ said don't tempt the Lord your God okay that's what that's what me must do and uh, I, I, the, several weeks after I was baptized I received so much revelation um, you know I've received I've shared that revelation which I which I have put on my website I've made videos about but the, th the thing that we, we, we do get te <coughs> tempted by Satan, we 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 aren't um, above that. Okay, we are we are basically still in this world, and still the prince of this world is ruling in it, and he's always trying to, um, he's always trying to tempt the saints, he's always trying to trip us up, he's always trying to get us um, to go against the the will of God. This is why we we continually should be in prayer, as the apostle said. So um, you know, is your doctrine believing and accepting Jesus Christ or is uh, as your as your king? It's even more than a lord, a king is above a lord, okay, as your king and your redeemer, okay, your saviour is like fine, you save somebody from what, but your redeemer means that you're actually fully redeemed, mind, body and soul and spirit, okay, and uh, it, it means that of course um, we're going to have to die in this life in some way, and um, no, no matter how we do that, we just pray that it will be glorifying to the Father, we just we just um, thank him for everything and uh, you know trust in his name okay and that's all we can do and then we become water baptized now whether we do that in the name of Jesus in the name of Yeshua or in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit doesn't matter what we're actually doing is confessing our faith um, about the Son of God okay so when we say the Son we mean the Son of God okay and we mean the Holy Spirit we mean the Ruach HaKodesh and when we mean the Father okay that name should actually be manifest to us when we confess our faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. So there's various do doctrines hidden within the belief system that should identify us as the, the, the true bride of Christ. Okay, um, certainly entering into any theological debates or any debates about um, Darwinism. Uh, I've just not, not. I've always stayed clear of that on on YouTube and everywhere else because I just see it's completely pointless and a waste of time but uh, 
I, I reckon that you know the atheists and so on they stay well away from my channel because they, they can see that I'm, I'm not fooled by their their lies and and basically they know that it's lies that they're they're preaching they know that it's a gospel that they're preaching as well and uh, that you just have to come into sort of alignment with their non-theology and non-belief in God uh, I mean what, what kind of life would that be I mean what what hell but anyhow um, guys. Signing off, thank you for listening to this video and may the Lord